There you go. You ain't talking shit now, you bitch. <laughs> I've seen enough horror sequels to know that 90% of the time a sequel being straight to video means that it's most likely going to suck. However, occasionally we have films such as Curse of Chucky that are surprisingly really good. I was very surprised to find that Lost Boys The Tribe is the latter of the two. It's surprisingly decent. It's nothing groundbreaking or amazing, but for a sequel to The Lost Boys, it's pretty good. I think a lot of people's problem is that they had very high expectations of the film, but I went into the movie knowing that it wasn't going to be anywhere near as good as the original and that it also got really bad reviews. The movie is about an ex-professional surfer Chris and his sister Nicole. Chris and Nicole moved to a beach town called Luna Bay to live with their aunt after their parents died in a car accident, which I'm pretty sure is the number one killer of all movie orphans' parents. Chris goes around town looking for a surfboard shaper. He leaves his contact details and address at the only shaper in town's house, who happens to be Edgar Frog from the original, played once again by Corey Feldman. Chris then meets his high school surfing hero Shane Powers, who is played by Kiefer Sutherland's son Angus. Shane invites Chris to a party at his house. At the party, Chris is seduced by a woman named Lisa. Nicole is then showed around the house by Shane. Shane takes her to his bedroom and tricks her into drinking his blood. Chris takes Nicole home where she tries to hurt Chris. But before she does, Edgar knocks her out. Chris throws Edgar out and puts Nicole to bed. Then Lisa knocks at the door and tries to carry on what she started before. Then she starts to try and bite him but Chris throws her against a mounted rack of deer antlers on the wall. She then turns into stone and explodes. Chris then goes to Edgar to get his help. Nicole starts to hang out with Shane and his tribe of vampires as they try and turn Nicole into a full vampire by making her get her first kill. Chris comes in and starts to infiltrate the tribe. He himself drinks the blood and turns into a half vampire also which is probably the stupidest part of the movie. Then the tribe all kills a group of young women. But Chris refuses to and kills one of the vampires. Edgar then comes in and the other vampires run away. The last 10-15 minutes of the film is where the action and vampire slaying happens. Chris and Edgar infiltrate Shane's secret vampire lair so they can kill him and save Nicole before she makes her first kill. Without a doubt the best thing about the film is how gory it is. There is a hell of a lot of violence in the film and it looks really good because it's pretty much all practical. There is actually more blood than actual guts and it's really quite over the top. It's about what you expect to see in a Monty Python sketch, but it works and adds to the humour and fun of the movie. The film isn't as funny as the previous movie, but none of the jokes are awkward and unfunny. There is a recurring joke throughout the movie where two of the vampires keep impaling and stabbing each other because it doesn't kill them. It's quite funny and it's probably the most humorous part of the movie. The film looks much more professional than most straight to DVD sequels. Most of them look incredibly cheap, amateurish and awful, but this looks like a big budget theatrical sequel. There are a couple of really cool cameos in the movie. In the opening scene we have the obligatory opening death scene. In this movie the person who is killed is Tom Savini. Yep, the godfather of gore himself, Tom Savini is in this movie. It's pretty cool to see him, even if he's in it very briefly. Although it's always cool to see him cameo in any movie. Also, there's a mid credit scene where we see Corey Haim reprise his role from the original movie. But this time, he's a vampire. It's pretty cool to see him, and it's a shame that we never got to see him in another sequel before his death in 2010. He was originally supposed to be in the first, but since the schedule was so busy, he couldn't do it. I'm not sure why Alan Frog isn't in the movie though. He's in the next film so it's weird to see him not be in this film. Although it's not a massive problem. My biggest problem with the movie is the inconsistencies and subplots that go nowhere and have no purpose to the rest of the movie. Luckily though there aren't many of them in the film. Honestly, I was surprised by this film. I never expected it to be anywhere near as good as the original and so I wasn't disappointed when I saw the movie. It's far from perfect but for a straight to video sequel, it's a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend it but don't expect it to be a great movie. It's good but nothing amazing, I'll honestly probably forget most of it pretty quickly. 
I give Lost Boys the Tribe an 8 out of 10.